years ago when I used to work in Washington, um, I had a couple of workshops on many topics uh, from dark web, misinformation, etc. And the facilitator who was a, uh, who is now a friend of mine and he runs an intelligence business based in Switzerland, uh, he shared with us that his first job was in a factory assembling boxes. And um, by the end of a couple of weeks, he um, and his co-workers started to notice that he didn't have uh, that he didn't have cuts in their hands because most of the co-workers would cut their hands after handling the cardboard. So it was a mystery. It was like, how come this new guy doesn't get the cuts? What what what's the difference? And he said, oh, uh, maybe it's because of the manual. Have you read the instructions? And everybody was like, the instructions? What kind of instructions? And he said. Well, when you join the, the company, they give you the, the materials, and with the materials, there's a manual of instruction saying the first thing, put on your gloves. So put on your gloves, and that's what it takes not to get cuts, that's what it takes to build good boxes, and you're good to go to prevent harm. So the story, what it captures is um, that to create good things, to create incredible things, you need a method. There is a method to the madness. And the framework that we are sharing here is a framework that would allow you to develop relevant and really good uh, AI-based products. So my name is Cesar Rosales. I am um, coordinator at the Fairlight Initiative from the Inter-American Development Bank. And this is Mara Balestrini. Thank you, Mara. Hi, thank you so much for inviting us. I'm Mara Balestrini, and today, if I may, <laughs> we'd like to present some of the work that we're doing uh, in the context of the Fair Lag Initiative. This is an initiative that's put forward by the Inter-American Development Bank, in particular the IDB Lab, which is the laboratory, the innovation laboratory of the IDB. IDB. What we uh, do is we test innovative solutions and we support the development of uh, innovative systems. We, but <laughs> we provide financing, knowledge, and connections to nurture and support the entrepreneurial ecosystem in Latin America and the Caribbean. And we want companies and startups to stay ahead of the curve. In the context of the IDB Lab, we have a number of different initiatives aimed at supporting entrepreneurs and the development of technologies. And um, one of those is the Fair Lag Initiative. Fair Lag aims to support the development of fair artificial intelligence products. And th this is... Um, this is very important for us because as investors, uh, we need to ensure that we support companies that will not have a negative impact on society, on the environment. So Fairlack is aimed at supporting uh, frameworks and tools that entrepreneurs can incorporate so that they can develop solutions that use artificial intelligence to have a positive impact while mitigating the negative effects, such as bias, discrimination, etc. And on the other hand, we use the same ethical principles to help investors make good decisions when it comes to supporting, to financing these solutions. So today we want to share with you uh, a framework that is um, will soon be uh, online in October. And this is, um, we call it the entrepreneurial journey. And it's a framework that helps entrepreneurs to embed ethical principles in the development of their solutions. And it does this by um, asking questions, uh, questions that while entrepreneurs answer the questions, they reflect on the development of their, of their solutions and then in, they include best practice in the development. Thank you. <clears throat> so as, as you can see here, we have three lenses. The first one is solution, system, and society. So we look at the product 
from the perspective of each of these three lenses. So the content of the first one, solution, um, this is composed mainly by uh, three things, concept, concept and design, governance, and security. So what we want to make sure in, in this, uh, in this, with this first initial um, lens is uh, to review the product in terms of ethical alignment. So we want to make sure that you identify clear trade-offs of your solution. So for example, maybe you're working on um, a solution that aims at preventing financial fraud. No? Maybe you're doing that. To do it, uh, sometimes you need to identify a clear trade-off, which is privacy versus security. Maybe you need a lot of information in order uh, for your solution to, to be solid. Or maybe you cannot be super transparent with your solution, because um, then uh, the bad guys would know <laughs> what's the engineering behind so that they can work it around. So it's important to start thinking about this in a very well-structured manner. So, so that this is what we do in this initial aspect. And uh, here are some, uh, some of the um, instructions that we, we use very simply uh, to start identifying all of these, these gaps. So as I told you, the idea here is to um, to have an analytical way of reviewing what you do so that you can um, develop robust, trustworthy products and uh, mitigate risks. Then uh, we have an example here of a company in Mexico that has gone through this process. Uh, it is a company uh, in a very early stage. But after conducting this process, they were able to provide three things to angel investors. Uh, first of all, an action plan so that they would convey the, the message that they are a well-structured company, that uh, they are trustworthy, and that they have conscience of uh, these ethical harms that they might have um, in, the, in the ecosystem. So they were able to receive uh, angel investment precisely because of these um, aspects. And then we have the next lens. A second um, lens that is covered by this tool takes into account two elements that are crucial to the system that is created. One is the role of the human, the human involvement in the design of the tool. And the second is the life cycle, the, what we call artificial intelligence life cycle, which is the aspects pertaining to the data and the algorithms. So the human aspects um, have to do with how you design the system in a way that it either um, augments human capacity, it considers how to improve decision making rather than completely replace the human. That means uh, we, we, we support the development of tools that um, increase human awareness and capacity rather than totally replace the human, uh, such as in automation systems. And um, this, the set of questions that are comprised in the systems lens um, ask things regarding also the data that you use. How much do you know the data that your system is using? Um, is it of the right type? Uh, do you have enough data? Is this the, do, do you have data integrity? Uh, are you looking at, at privacy issues? Are you handling data in a way that is safe for users and for people? Also, is that, are, the, are your data systems interoperable? Have you taken into account cybersecurity issues? We see that a lot of, uh, a lot of the times, entrepreneurs are so focused in the development of their solution that they overlook these issues. But they are of paramount importance, and more and more um, investors will be looking at how much care it is put into the treatment of data in order to make an investment decision. And the other, the other aspect regards the, the, um, the type of algorithms that you use. Um, this, uh, our tool helps you assess whether the algorithm that you're using, um, uh, whether you're, you're, you're 
uh, checking that uh, no bias is involved in your solution. It can be statistical, cognitive bias, cultural bias, um, that you look into error and, and noise, that you look into discrimination and exclusion as well. And, and other aspects that are covered in this part of the tool are those pertaining to the human computer interaction aspects. For example, whether the system provides feedback for users or is designed in a way that the, the user understands why the system is providing an answer, how it came up with that answer. So that, that's what we call explainability or interpretability. And also, for example, whether it supports the human in making decisions. We want to avoid what is known as black box algorithms or black box artificial intelligence, where the system will put forward an answer. But we have, as humans, no way of assessing whether that answer is correct or maybe wrong or biased in any way. Um, some guiding questions regarding the system uh, part of our tool are how well you know your data, why are you using a specific algorithm? If you consider the impact of the, uh, that your system may have, and uh, whether you are aware of any trade-offs that you may be, um, may be part of your system. For example, you increase the, uh, in order to have a much more customized system, you collect more data, which somehow poses a risk onto uh, the management of personal data, or you can develop a system that surveils some people just because you want to have enough data to, to make it more useful or more engaging. So ethical, ethical issues always tend to come in the, in the form of trade-offs, and we want to help entrepreneurs think of all these trade-offs with this tool. An example of, I'm going to just share one example. Um, we worked with a company uh, that develops um, a system. It, uh, it's called Portal Telemedicina, and it develops a health tech system to help. Uh, this is from Brazil, and it uh, helps doctors uh, assess um, uh, x rays. And uh, a key component here is that after uh, going through the process uh, with us of the self assess using the self assessment tool, they realized that they could improve the user interface to provide uh, doctors who use the system with uh, a more clear, let's see if I can use the light. Yes, you see there. <laughs> with provide a score that would help the doctor see how accurate the recommendation provided by the system was. This is very important because it helps the doctor make the right decision or either take on board the suggestion provided by the system or completely disregard it if the, if the percentage of accuracy is low. This is a way in which you can use um, explainability or better user interface design to support human decision making rather than completely try to replace the doctor's decision making. And the final lens. <laughs> Finally, least but last but not least, uh, we look at society, sociedad, which is translated there. <laughs> um, so this is very important for us because the mandate of the bank is a development organization in, in the Americas. Um, so it's very important for us to make sure that when deploying technology into uh, you know, um, any, any market or ecosystem, we do not create further gaps in terms of inequality or you know, any other uh, um, structural bias uh, into the society. So this is really important for us. Um, there are a couple of things that we look at here. Uh, but really, uh, what we see is that there are very simple questions that would allow you to start um, structuring uh, your, you know, the, the improvement of your product in these terms. So, first of all, would you use the system? The, what you make? Would you use it uh, honestly to yourselves? If, I mean, this is um, easy and difficult to, to answer. 
Um, if not, why? Uh, what, are the, what are the aspects that need uh, further improvement so that you would use it? Who benefits from your solutions? Uh, so most of the time, um, these, these kind of solutions, um, they benefit um, the startup, the founders, the users. But there is another question. Who is affected by your solution? And so this is key because sometimes um, there are some segments of the population that are being affected by the solution. They are being excluded. So for example, in, in fintech, uh, in, 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 the fi in the fintech field, sometimes when using credit scoring, you know, it, it's easy to, to affect women that do not have any credit background and this kind of issues. And does it matter? Does it matter to leave segments of the population outside? Um, maybe, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. It depends on your solution, but this is something you need to ask. So we're not here to, to say what is right or wrong, but at least to provide you with a framework that would allow you to make the right decisions. This is an example of a, of a company in Mexico. Uh, it, it was very interesting because they work with uh, governments. And so what they did is to, to offer them advice on what to expect on artificial intelligence being used and deployed in the public sector. No? So they, they usually uh, encounter uh, difficult requests by governments that they need to, they need to manage so that uh, at least uh, the deployment of this kind of technology do not create any, any kind of harm. So it, it's been interesting to uh, look at these examples. Uh, after using the, the web tool, this is what you get. You get a report, a to-do list on what are the recommendations low-hanging fruits uh, so that you can start this process. This is an iterative process, and I think I'm overstepping to you. <laughs> so basically, to wrap up, yeah, as part of the, of the Fairlack initiative, we have created this tool. The, we, we call it the S3 framework, or entrepreneurial journey, that guides entrepreneurs through a, a set of questions including the solution, the system, and society, that allow them to assess how much they are uh, considering ethical issues in the development of their system. And it allows them also to receive recommendations to improve their solutions, to make them better, stronger, have a more positive impact in, in society. And, and at the same time, gain uh, um, the, the, the possibility to uh, receive a better assessment uh, from the side of investors who look at these uh, issues. So this tool will be uh, online, open for anybody to be used um, on the 26th of October. And what are the benefits of using this tool? Apart from what we just uh, explained, you will be able to log in and use the tool. You will be able to record your results and get a list of recommendations to improve your solution. And you will be able to run the, the, um, the assessment as many times as you want to see how you are evolving with time as you apply the recommendations. And you will be able to see how uh, you uh, achieve better results. But also, as more entrepreneurs use this tool, you will be able to compare your results with others uh, who are doing similar things than you, who have a company that is from, uh, working in the same vertical or have similar um, characteristics. And last but not least, by um, sharing your, your contact information through this list, you will be um, able to, to have access to other fair lack services, such as invitations to events, invitations to our acceleration programs, or to actually have um, some form of interaction 
with uh, the investment um, side of the bank who considers uh, these sort of uh, companies and AI solutions for further support. So you can scan this code and be in touch with us, or we, you can follow us in social media. And uh, we'll be delighted to offer more information on the tool, the framework, the initiative, and the work that we are doing with entrepreneurs in Latin America and the Caribbean, but also across the world. Because Fairlack is uh, establishing hubs. We already have five hubs uh, in Latin America and the Caribbean, but we're always open for collaborations to extend the network and ensure that more entrepreneurs have access to the framework and the tools that we are developing. So thank you very much. Thank you. You've been a terrific audience.